Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Crypto Current. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And today I got a special guest. Man, we interviewed this company earlier on episode 25, um, but they have been ripping and roaring. They've had so much happen in the last year and a half that I had to get another person on the team here. So we have Joey with Gilded. How are you doing today? What's up, Richard? How's it going, man? Good to, good to talk to you. Of course, man. Well, happy to have you here. Uh, before we, we dive on in, um, how about you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm a uh, CPA. I'm actually born and raised in Washington, D.C. Um, went to Florida State for, for college, majored in accounting uh, back in the early 2000s. Um, you know, got out, of, uh, got out of school, went into public accounting, worked for uh, RSM and EY for a little, little bit. Um, so I did the public accounting thing uh, for about <laughs> way too long than I, than I care to even remember. It was about uh, 10 years, nine years. So I did that, but um, you know, kind of fell down the, the crypto rabbit hole in 2017 uh, when everybody and their mom was, was going to become you know, crypto billionaires and yeah. drive, drive Ferrari. So, but, uh, but really fell down it more. You know, I, I was drawn in from kind of the Bitcoin, you know, what is this? What's this internet money kind of thing? Drawn in from that, you know, perspective at the beginning. Um, but really, uh, with, you know, within kind of, um, you know, the first, uh, you know, initial research that I did on Bitcoin, I really realized the accounting aspects uh, and, and that, that blockchain and crypto has um, and how it's really going to turn accounting and flip accounting and auditing on its head. Um, having, you know, Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain being an open source, uh, you know, general ledger that's immutable, um, you know, really brings a whole new dynamic into accounting and, and crypto or into accounting and auditing that's, uh, you know, never been changed since uh, Luca Pacioli invented accounting, you know, way back when in the Roman, in the Roman times. So, you know, this, this brings into the ideas of like triple entry accounting and, and all that. And, um, you know, it's some really, really cool stuff that, uh, you know, I think is going to be here a lot sooner than, than people realize, um, but it's going to be good. It's going to help uh, really track uh, a lot of the accounting uh, stuff going forward. But um, so fell into it that way. And then uh, I started going to some of the meetups uh, here in New Orleans um, for, for crypto. And that's where I met Gil. And, um, and yet, you know, Gil and that guy's, that guy's yeah. a visionary. That guy's a visionary, man. So, um, you know, he's, he's, he spent a lot of his time um, working payment or basically building out payment systems for Squidoo which is uh, one of the companies that he co-founded with Seth Godin. So he has a billing and payment system background and he sees crypto from the billing and payment system side. I saw it from the accounting side. We said, Hey, you know, this could be something. Um, so met him there and that's where we kind of formed the team. We stole Ken, uh, our CTO, who was actually the head of the Ethereum meetup here in New Orleans. We stole him yeah. away and um, just started from there. So, yeah, we, we, uh, that's, that's kind of how I got into crypto, into Gilded, and, and to where I am today. So Right. So you brought up a point that I don't think a lot of people have even considered or, or thought about, and, and which is why I think Gilded is set up in such a unique and, and powerful position, is the accounting standpoint and, and how, just like you said, this is from an accounting like background it hasn't changed in thousands of years yet. Here's this new technology that can disrupt it and do it easier, faster, and, and more distributed, all this, all this stuff. When you realize that, like that vision, you know, was that the, that moment when you talked with Gil about this is, was that the moment you're like, okay, I'm stopping doing my accounting and I'm going to like pursue this. Like, what was that like? Moment? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'd say the, so the moment really was like, you know, when I, when I really understood the, the change that it's going to have, in my head, I was like, okay, either I need to uh, become basically a, a, a savant or leader in the blockchain and crypto accounting space for my firm, like carve out an industry niche. Um, but, you know, still, still at that point in time, especially in New Orleans, still kind of super early for that. It's like, okay, if I'm going to do something like that, I may have to uproot, go to New York or, or somewhere where, where kind of blockchain fintech's a little bigger. 
So I was like, all right, I either, either need to do that or I need to start my own company. So I yeah. um, went to start my own company route when we, you know, when I met Gil, um, it was just like, hey, you know, I see the implications of uh, accounting and having to account for this stuff. Like there's nothing out there right now that there, there's no, there's no software out there. There's no product out there right now that can do this. It needs to be done on for accounting purposes. Like this is going to be a mess or nightmare as accounts are going to start dealing with this both on the tax side and the end when they're performing audits. Um, so, you know, if we can build this out and kind of be that bridge or connector between uh, the old financial system and the new and help kind of onboard these people and be like, Hey, you know, use our product and you can see, or use, use what we built, use our platform. And you can, you can track and be able to account for these crypto assets initially. And we can start onboarding these people. That was just kind of, we just like literally how I'm talking, we just kind of yeah. rolled with it just like that. And, and just kept so, going. um, yeah, and Gil, you know, Gil from the payment side, uh, you know, he saw when he built out the payment systems for Squidoo, he had to pay people all across the world, right? Because it's anybody that's submitting content into the site, um, he's got to pay them for it. So he realized the issues uh, with um, just PayPal, you know, your, your, your typical money transfer um, services out there, PayPal, um, TransferWise, Beam, or et cetera. There were some, well, I guess Beam wasn't there back then, but... PayPal was a big one back then and just sending wires, et cetera. It was <clears throat> really expensive and, mm -hmm. um, you know, no transparency. It would take, you know, it could take anywhere from three days to a week to send money to different places in the world. So he saw, you know, crypto is the new rails to be able to send payment, um, you know, instantaneously to anybody. And that's where he's like, Hey, if we can integrate this into something very easy for people and businesses to be able to use, like that's where this is going to, gonna go and i was like yep <laughs> yeah so He's like i'm on board with that i see the vision exactly. exactly and 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 let's go get it so you know fast forward you create the company um i believe this is you know late 2018 so first yep. explain what is gilded um and then after you explain that dive into a little bit of you got y'all got invited to tech stars and talk about that yep. experience yeah absolutely yeah so gilded is the uh, simple way to uh, integrate digital currency into your existing back office systems to be able to send payment to anybody in the world and reconcile those payments into your accounting system, et cetera. Um, that's just an easy way to put it. We do a lot of automation integration on back end too, where we can work with CRM systems, um, et cetera, and help automate AR flows and AP flows. Um, but in a nutshell, we're really just trying to deliver uh, a simple automated digital currency uh, back office solution to help businesses adopt crypto and be able to to reap the benefits of digital currency. Um, so I think that's where it's, you know, that's where it's heading. So yeah. um, when we started out, you know, we started out in, in late 2018 and, and we really thought of this as, as like I was saying, just just an accounting product, like basically just being able to track uh, all of your crypto movements, trades, et cetera, within our platform, and then being able to integrate those transactions into uh, accounting systems. So not necessarily from a tax perspective, because um, when we started out, there were already a lot of like tax trackers out there, et cetera. That was kind of the first, um, if you want to call it like accounting summit that was already kind of reached and, and saturated a little bit at that point. Um, because I, you know, everybody that was in crypto at the beginning was just individuals. So everybody needed the individual tax help. Um, but there were no tools. We noticed, you know, we knew from the beginning there were no tools for businesses. Um, so we're like, hey, if, if businesses are going to be able, want to be able to adopt this technology and utilize its benefits, we need to be able to create a simple solution for them to do this. So we started out with the accounting product, knowing that there was a lot of accounting issues. Um, and we, when we were... Um, at the beginning of 2019, we started applying to some of the bigger, uh, you know, the bigger accelerator programs, Y Combinator, Techstars, et cetera. Techstars had a blockchain accelerator program in New York City, um, and we were lucky enough to get selected for that. So uh, the five of us co-founders went up to New York um, last, so 2019, February 2019. Um, this is uh, all pre pre-corona. Yeah. Uh, so got to go to the city and thank God it was last year, not this year, but, um, 
so yeah, we spent three months up there really honing our product and really understanding what the issues were in the market for uh, crypto accounting, um, talking to a lot of uh, crypto or firms that were on the cutting edge of doing blockchain audits, uh, crypto accounting, crypto tax, et cetera, really diving in, diving deep into uh, the industry at that point in time as to where, where, where it was at or where it's at, where it's going, what the problems are, where, what we can, what we, yeah, what we can help solve. Um, so with that, we, you know, with all that customer discovery uh, during those three months, we came out of TechStars um, and launched our first uh, product, which was the QuickBooks integration. So a business could easily accept cryptocurrency and integrate those crypto transactions into QuickBooks, uh, starting with QuickBooks, just because we know uh, that had the most um, accounting users across the U.S. So, uh, and, and that, that got some really good traction, you know, a lot of good interest from accountants. Um, but, you know, we were still seeing a need for payments. We, we initially, when we built the software, we built kind of a, a very MVP payment solution, invoicing solution. And as we were launching the accounting piece, we were still seeing a lot of traction on the invoicing piece, even though we weren't giving it that much attention. So that's when we kind of uh, shifted our focus a bit and realized, okay, going back to the YC theme of make something people want, uh, maybe people oh, actually want, <laughs> yeah, maybe we're like, maybe people actually want, or, you know, it seems like more people are actually wanting this payment tool. Um, so that's where we started kind of shifting our focus a little bit uh, last fall. And we were, we were lucky enough to be able to uh, meet Spencer and the, the CoinMarketCap team um, last fall. They reached out to us um, looking for a, basically a solution on their AR side to be able to accept cryptocurrency. Uh, I should say when they issue a deal through their CRM system to be able to automate that, that process from issuing a finalized deal to closing, to closing or to receiving the payment using digital currency. So we were able to build a solution for them where when they close the deal in their CRM system, so when I say CRM, I'm talking you know, HubSpot, et cetera. They use a CRM called Pipedrive. I'm giving a lot of free plugs in this podcast. Uh, <laughs> All they, good, good yeah, plugs. Yeah, so when, when they would basically uh, close a deal or, or take a deal and, and finalize it in, in Pipedrive, we would automatically create an invoice the second they, they mark the deal as closed or sold. Then the then, uh, coin market app could go in. They could uh, basically write the write the details on the invoice, send the invoice to the customer. The customer then when then has the choice to pay the invoice via Bitcoin, Ethereum, any ERC twenty token, or the multiple stable coins that we support: Paxos, BUSD, TrueUSD, USDC, etc. Um, so we started out saying, Hey, why don't you, you know, businesses that want to start dabbling into crypto or start accepting crypto, you can use us and you can give your customers a choice. Like they can pay crypto, but we also would give them a choice. Like, Hey, also, if you want to send a wire, if you want to send uh, a bank ACH, you can use us. If you want to, uh, you know, pay via Stripe or something like that, we can also integrate, or we've also integrated that into our platform. So businesses can be able to pay using traditional methods too. So it's kind of like, hey, you can start dipping your toes in if you want. Um, there's traditional methods and new methods. Um, so when we built that out for Car Market Cap and we launched it here uh, just about a month or two ago, uh, they uh, it's blown up obviously. Yeah. Um, they've gotten, uh, yeah, yeah. They've, they've, uh, they moved all, I think they've moved most, if not all of their, receivables on our platform. Um, we're getting a lot of great feedback from, from what we've done with them. Uh, and a lot of people are starting to, to notice like, oh, wow, okay, I see the benefits of this. Um, and we also, with that solution, we also created a, a Coinbase, actually I, backtracking a second. One of the biggest thing we, things we did for them was create a solution in Coinbase wherein the user can pay their Coinbase wallet directly through our invoicing tool and it gets paid and then we have a feature that can automatically flip so if somebody creates uh send, sends an invoice in bitcoin 
we can automatically flip that into USDC or any stable coin the second it, it hits their Coinbase wallet so that the volatility gotcha. risk is gone. Right. So you're, um, you're, you're getting the money that you're looking for at that moment. You're not letting it go up or down with. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah, we, we enabled that in, in, or we have that in a solution. So, you know, the user can pay through Coinbase through, through uh, coin market caps, Coinbase account, it gets paid, it gets closed out, and then it gets reconciled all the way into their QuickBooks account. So it's basically, we're automating away the, basically the entire AR process from initiation, invoice initiation, to when the journal entry is actually recorded into QuickBooks. Which is extremely powerful. And yeah, it's interesting to see how y'all have pivoted so much from the original vision to now and, and how far it's come. And I think one of the things that you brought up a little bit earlier that I want to just touch back on is build what people want, right? Build, like, listen to what your customers are saying, listen to what your users are saying and, and work around it. Once you've seen those integrations, like what was the moment when you're like, okay, this is the direction we need to go for right now. Let's, let's, let's fix this problem. And then what's, how's it been received? So of course you got core market cap at this point, but like, how are you starting to see an, an inflow of like new people that are trying to use this now? Yeah. So when we, when, when we started building this solution for core market cap, that's kind of like when we really went back into, okay, let's, let's focus on payments and see how this is going to flow through. And funny enough, when we launched this, we're, we're now kind of focusing our ad messaging, et cetera, um, all around payments. And we're actually getting more people come to our platform for accounting. <laughs> So then we were before when we were kind of like, you know, all, all about, Hey, you know, we can reconcile books with your, or reconcile your books, et cetera, for crypto accounting. Now that we're focusing on payments, we're getting all this accounting traction and I get it. Like payments and accounting, they kind of go together one and one. Uh, they're kind of, you know, they're obviously intertwined, right? You can't have payments without accounting. You can't have accounting without payments. They're kind of, they, they go together hand in hand. Right. Um, so I, I get where that comes from. Um, but yeah, you know, going back to your, to your question, like, you know, when we now, now that people are starting to understand kind of how, what we're trying to build in our vision, which is, uh, as Gil likes to say, I'm going to steal this line is like, um, the problem with crypto and blockchain right now is like, you still have to understand it in order to use it. Like, you know, you shouldn't be able, when you drive your car, you don't have to understand how to, how an internal combustion engine works to like get in your car, turn it on and drive. So that's what we're trying to do with crypto is that somebody can just plug it in, turn it on and drive and start sending payments, start, start being able to reconcile their books, start being able to, you know, track cost bases, et cetera. So that's why, that's what we're heading towards. And that's kind of our vision is being able to build those tools so an individual can seamlessly be able to use it and seamlessly integrate it into their, their existing business products. So yeah, sure. going back to, you know, make something people want, that's where we saw, you know, we were seeing this payment demand. And then as we focused on that and we started tracking those KPI metrics, we were seeing more and more uptick on the invoice side. And that's kind of where we were like, okay, obviously people want this and it makes sense, right? If you're a small business and you're, you know, nowadays everybody's decentralized. You're you're hiring a marketing team in Europe. Your back office team is in India. Like you're, you know, you're you're all over the place. So you're sending payments all across the world. So right. it makes sense for people who understand crypto, and for countries that have kind of a current crypto friendly regulations where they can either off ramp or be able to store it um, on different different platforms, etc. That you can use crypto um, and really reap the benefits of of the low fees and transparency. So um, that's where, again, we're, we're seeing that demand and, and we're currently tackling the, the, the blockchain crypto space. Yep. Uh, funny enough, um, when we were doing a lot of our, our initial customer discovery around crypto accounting, we realized that a lot of blockchain companies don't actually pay or use crypto on the back end. Like I would say, so this was, you know, back, Back in 2019, when we were really doing a lot of our customer discovery, I would say back then, almost 70% 70, 70 of the blockchain companies were not actually paying in crypto. Um, and we, we would always laugh and be like, oh, yeah, you know, like, it's so slow. And, and like, who wants to pay in crypto right now? And it's like, so you're a crypto company 
yeah, you're not even eating your own dog food. Like there's like, that's the problem, right? Like, yeah. like, like, and it was kind of like staring us in the face then, but like, then we circled back six months later and like, after it smacked us in the face a couple of times, we're like, all right, this makes sense. Like we need to solve this problem. Like you shouldn't have crypto companies not eat, not using crypto to pay each other. So we realized, you know, that by being able to kind of create that solution that can tackle that space first, obviously that's going to be your early adopters um you know then it can grow from there um but some of our customers right now are are non-crypto people um we have for instance like we have a daycare center in silicon valley and it's uh they 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 use our they're a paying customer and um was just on the phone with him the other day and yeah he's like yeah we have our our all of our kids all their parents are all software developers and engineers and they all want to pay in crypto so <laughs> we have to use you guys because they all i was like all right that makes sense and then we have uh one guy who's uh an asparagus farmer in chile and he ships his product to canada and he's tired of paying the the foreign transaction fees etc yep. so he's using our pra- platform to invoice and get paid in um, you know, stable coins or Bitcoin, whatever, and escape all those fees. And yeah, you know, there's two use cases right there. And we're like, okay, this makes sense. These people get it. So we, you know, we can build off. I mean, that's obviously just two. We, we, right. we have yeah. some more, but it, you kind of build off that from there. So absolutely. And, and, and this actually ties into a final question I want, I want to leave in, in this realm real quick is like, who is the ideal customer? So everyone who's listening right now, they have some sort of crypto business or they have a regular business or what have you, who this product yielded. If I want to come in and use this, like what are the ways that I can come in and like set this up and use it every day? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the ideal customer right now is a, is an early adopter crypto business. So any crypto business that wants to get paid in, in crypto and start, um, you know, start being able to leverage crypto on the back end. We're going to make that as seamless as possible for you. Um, so we're going to we're going to connect into your back office. We're going to connect into your accounting system. We're going to connect into your CRM system, and automate away a lot of those processes and make it super simple for you to use crypto. So not just but uh, you, you know starting with the the early adopters in the crypto space, but the biggest target for us really overall is going to be any business that does business uh and and sends payments globally so we really say that our target market is basically global payments um or businesses doing business globally so anybody that's tired of paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in bank fees every year we can come in and solve that problem and not only can we solve that problem by reducing fees but we can automate some of those processes for you um on the crypto side if you're getting paid in crypto to be able to reduce the time spent in reconciling payments, et cetera, et cetera. So really, ideally, it's for businesses, you know, transacting globally um, or even businesses that, that are transacting, you know, within, within a certain country. But, um, you know, if you're trying to stray away from certain bank accounts, et cetera, um, you know, trying to get into crypto and, and, and being able to use the crypto rails um, or digital currency rails, that's, that's where we come into play. So... Um, and we we do this all by, by leveraging a lot of our partnerships um, within our networks. So leveraging stablecoin partnerships, leveraging our partnerships with liquidity providers, et cetera. Um, so we we integrate all that into our system to make it easy for the end user to be able to use. Amazing, man. Well, definitely worth uh, checking out. Um, and and everyone listening, definitely go go check them out. But I want to shift gears real quick of. You know, you've been in this space for a while now. You, you, you're you at the forefront of looking at all these different companies and how they're buying and receiving pavements and, and everything else. COVID came and affected the world in a, in a major way. And and there's just a lot going on. What are some things in the crypto and blockchain space that are in the horizon that you think others should be aware of? Digital currency is like coming quickly. Government tipped their hand in that first stimulus package when they were going to give everybody basically crypto wallets and give everybody their $1,200 in digital currency. Like when I saw that in the bill, that's when I got super excited because I wasn't sure how far along, you know, you hear stories that the government was super behind on this. Mm -hmm. You hear some people say that they were actually kind of up to speed. They just tipped their hand that they are like ready to freaking do this. Um, so to me that like, I, I like jumped out of my chair when I saw that because yeah. that just validated for me 
that they are really close to having a digital currency. Um, and, and I get, you know, it's not true crypto, it's just the digital currency, et cetera. Um, but you know, it's, it's a step in the right direction and it gets people to be able to start, start using the benefits of, of, uh, of crypto in terms of, like I said, the transparency, the speed and the low cost. So I think that's, that's coming a lot quicker than people realize. Um, and right now, like everybody in the space is just like really building out the right products and tools to make it super simple for people to use. Um, you know, you're seeing every day, you're seeing different products coming out that's, that have, uh, you know, new, new features for, uh, being able to store your crypto, um, I'm probably going to answer one of your, one of your, one of your questions of, Go for uh, it. yeah. So, Go for it. so if you say, I'm going to say, and this is another plug, man, I'm just plugging away. So <laughs> hottest, my favorite, uh, project in the space right now. Um, and everybody laughs at me, but it's BlockFi. And if you're not, if you don't hold okay. your crypto in BlockFi, uh, I don't say shame on you because I get it. They're they're a custody provider. You're you're scared they're gonna they're gonna lose your Bitcoin, but man, the interest rates on that are way too high for you not to take the chance. You can earn eight eight point six percent on a stable coin, and I think their BTC yesterday was at five point three percent, five point four four percent. So if you're just sitting there like hodling your Bitcoin. You might as well put it on BlockFi and get five point. I think it's five point four percent interest on it, which is like if you you know if you have. <laughs> I mean, do the math. That can be a lot of money. So yes, BlockFi is my favorite. They actually just launched an app uh, a few weeks ago. So they have a phone, a mobile app now. They do have trading. You can trade on there now, and they said they're going to roll out this year that you can actually finally uh, send basically USD to their app uh and be able to convert usd into wow. crypto so they're like rocking and rolling um yeah. I'm quick a, I'm a quick big on fan that plug yeah the, yeah interestingly enough we had flory one of the co-founders on the show uh in, nice. in the past so yes yeah, nice. they're, they're doing some some really great stuff love blockfi yeah they're they're great people um and everybody that wants to you know is scared about the the custody provider i mean they do hold or you know not being able to custody your, their funds they do hold 95 percent other funds is held by Gemini. Gemini on their site says that, uh, you know, everything's, uh, or I'm sorry, hundred percent of the, uh, yeah, take this back. hundred percent of the funds that go into BlockFi are held by Gemini stores. Gemini takes 95% of the funds and holds them in cold storage. 5% is hold it held in like a hot wallet, but that 5% is also insured. Now it's not FDIC insurance, but it's insured. So like it's kind of as close to as safe as you can get. Um, so like I said, I'm willing to take the risk to to earn the interest, um, and I like my little interest check that I get every month. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm a fan. Awesome. No, no, I appreciate uh, appreciate that plug because it isn't it is important and for everyone uh, who was looking to learn more about that. He was, he brought up uh, that's episode 81. Um, we talked with Flory. She's one of the co-founders of BlockFi, so definitely go listen to that. But Man, first of all, Joey, again, you've dropped a ton of knowledge on us today. Love what y'all are doing with Gilded um, and keeping your ears around with future of digital currency and what that looks like. What is a final thought that you want to leave with all of our listeners here today? Yeah, so I'd say, you know, for anybody that's looking to, if you're, well, I guess everybody listening to this show is probably pretty familiar with crypto. But for anybody listening to this show that's a business that wants to get into crypto, come check us out. Um, you know, we're going to make it super simple for you to be able to transact in crypto and, and uh, be able to get more and more businesses on board with crypto. Um, but not just, you know, check us out. I think, you know, the future of the space, I think it's, it's I think actually COVID for as much as a, you know, uh, bad, a pandemic that it's been and, and kind of sad times and all of that. It, I think it's really been an accelerant in the, the digital currency space. Um, everybody, you know, is really embracing the, the global globalization of things. And that, I think that really holds true in the crypto space. So I think you're seeing more and more people starting to check it out. You know, you heard about everybody all of a sudden on Coinbase, like over when, when the stimulus checks came out, all of a sudden it was like $1,200 deposits in the Coinbase that you saw and stuff like that. So yeah. I think more and more people, you know, 
I think the COVID's really kind of dumped gasoline on the fire on the whole, uh, if you want to call it like fiat currency problem, et cetera, that uh, Anthony Pompliano always talks about. Another plug, check out the Pomp podcast. I know Richard's po- podcast is my favorite. Pomp is number two, though, <laughs> uh, right behind Cryptocurrency. Yeah, no problem. Um, he 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 drops some he drops some good knowledge and has a good good newsletter. But uh, yeah, he he talks about you know the race between or the problem with with uh, obviously the the economic spend and just the money printer you know the money the money printer and 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 how that's gonna you know basically create too much inflation and just really increase that wealth gap between um, the wealthiest and, and the middle class and. Um, you know, a lot of it makes sense. And, and I think, um, you know, it's, it's just turning a lot of people to understand what crypto is and how it can be a safe haven and how it can be kind of an escape from the system and, you know, how powerful it really is. So, uh, you know, combine that with the having, I mean, we're just rocking and rolling in the crypto space right now. It's a big year. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of excitement and definitely a lot of momentum building. So I definitely concur with, with everything you just said. And, Joey, what are some different ways that people can connect with you and learn more about Gilded? Yeah, so check me out on Twitter at Joey T. Ryan. You can check me out on LinkedIn, uh, Joey, Joey Ryan, and check us out at Gilded.finance. Um, you can learn more about us. Don't hesitate to hit us up on the chat bubble. You can email me at Joey at Gilded.finance. And that's pretty much it. Okay, perfect. Well, again, appreciate your time today, Joy, and for everyone listening, stay cryptocurrent.